Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Nail It Polish. Um, today we are going to be doing five different patriotic designs. I'm going to show you how to make each one of these. On my pinky here, we actually have a blue base, and it has some star glitter confetti on it. It's actually really pretty. Um, this one right here is a red base with a firework design on it. This design right here is all caviar beads, red, white, and blue mix, and I'll show you how to do that as well. This design right here is a blue base with a firework starburst on it, which is kind of like this design, just kind of opposite colors. And then of course on the thumb is a red base and it has this like really pretty glitter topper on it. So I'm going to show you how to do each one of these designs today and if you want to stick around for one, great. If you want to stick around for all five, even better. Completely up to you. Before we get started, I wanted to ask you, please, if you haven't, come like my page. It is Nail It Polish, just like it's spelled right here on the paper. Um, I would love to have you join our little nail polish community and, you know, interact with the um, posts as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. I will answer them as well as I can during the live video. Um, all depends. I, you know, painting nails does take a lot of concentration, but I'll still constantly try to look at my phone and answer questions as I go. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, first design we are going to be doing today is we're going to be doing this blue nail right here with all the glitter um, confetti on it. So what you're going to need for this one, of course if you're doing them on natural nails, you're going to need a base coat of your choosing. I like to use this one right here, um, it's by Finger Paints, it's called a Grab It Base Coat. Unfortunately I think this one is now um, no longer being made because I did pick it up at clearance at Sally's a while ago. But you can use whatever base coat you trust, um, completely up to you. So if you're doing natural nails, then you need that. But for me today, I'm just going to be doing them. Oh, my camera's no longer in focus. Um, I'm just going to be doing them on these nail pops here. So it'll be a lot easier um, for me. I'm not going to need the base coat and all that crazy stuff. But if you are doing them on natural nails, you are going to want that base coat just so it prevents the staining. So obviously for this design right here, we are going to need our blue base. Um, I chose this blue right here by Revlon. It's actually called um, I'm Electro. And it was from their Superman, or not Superman, wow, I'm having a rough day here. It's um, from their Spider-Man collection from a couple years back. It's actually this really pretty blue. And it's kind of like an electric blue almost. Obviously with its title being I'm Electro. So you are going to need this blue for this design. You are also going to need some type of glitter, um, star glitter of some sort. You can get star glitter that comes in the polish bottle already, but I chose a star glitter that was in a pot just because it does have all these like really pretty holographic effects. And when it does get into the sunlight, it gets really, really pretty. Um, kind of see all those glitters going on. So you can only imagine this is under fake light, you know, indoor light, not even in the sunlight. So you can imagine how bright this is. So what you're going to do first for this nail, obviously shake your nail polish up really nice and good, which I did just do off camera. And when you are applying nail polish, make sure that instead of, a lot, I get this a lot, Instead of taking your brush and wiping it along the side and really trailing all of the polish down, um, oops, as I totally just wiped out on my bottle, um, instead of trailing it down the side in order to keep your bottle clean, make sure you wipe off on the inside of the bottle. Um, for some reason, this is not coming into focus. Let me see if I can back up. focus feature. 
Okay, so now we're back in business. So when you are wiping your bottle of nail polish, make sure when you're wiping it, you wipe it along the side so that it drips right back into the bottle, not down the side. If you drop it down the side, all the polish gets in the threads and it can actually dry your polish out very, very quickly. So since I have mixed this up really well, ready for my application, you're just going to lightly take some of this blue, which I might have grabbed the wrong blue. Yeah, I totally grabbed the wrong blue. Hold on guys, I'll be right back. Alright guys, just kidding. I am now back. I totally grabbed the wrong blue for this design. Um, I was actually trying to decide between two different colored blues yesterday. And the blue that I picked right here, this is the uh, I'm Electro one, turned out really light, which obviously if you can look right here on our pop, obviously we're not going to see anything. It's not going to be this beautiful blue color. So. We're gonna take this I'm Electro and just put it on the side. This new one that I just went to go grab um, from my nail polish room, it is called Super Powered, and it is also by Revlon Spider-Man Collection. They look very similar, um, just Super Powered is a little bit darker and it's a lot easier to uh, become opaque. So, let's give that one a good shake and try this again for the second time. Okay. So, like I was saying, when you are applying nail polish, make sure you brush it off inside the bottle. And always start from the top and go straight down, which I did not grab enough for this one. This one, I love this color. It is very, very shiny. It's wonderful, except for one thing. If you do not use a base coat on this, it will stain your nails super, super bad. So make sure make sure, double make sure, that you use a base coat if you have this polish at home. If you don't have this exact same polish, you can, I'm sure you can find something very similar, if not close to this color. See, like I said, that's one coat. It's much more opaque than that other one I had. So, let's put that one down right there just to dry. While we're waiting for that to dry for a moment, we're going to get our stars that are confetti ready. So what I like to do is I just kind of open this up and I dump a few, oh, or a bunch where I can access them very easily, which, come to think about, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I don't need that many. I only put five on my nail, so my nail's kind of short though. But, you know, you can put them in whatever pattern you'd like. You can put them going down the side. You can put them on an angle. Um, on mine, I kind of put three on one side and two on another. Kind of up to you. All depends on your own personal preference. And if you're anything like me, I'm kind of clumsy when it comes to glitter. I have had way too many of these pots end up on the ground, and then I spend the next hour picking up little pieces of glitter. Does not make for a very fun time. So I'm gonna put that off the side. I always replace my lid just in case. Now, since this is a nail pop, it isn't your natural nail. If you have your natural nails and you are doing this on your natural nails, give it plenty of time to dry because you do not want to be putting wet nail polish on top of a tacky layer of nail polish because it won't completely dry. So, let's go ahead and finish this one up. Get another layer here. Once again, start from the top. You can kind of see that rich color starting to develop as it goes. Now this is where having the glitter out comes in handy. Now I do like this color right now. I don't know if it's going to show on camera all that well. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. Now that it's got hanging from. You can kind of see a little bit of streakiness. It's not too bad. Um, let me see if I can help. Nope, it doesn't want to come to focus. 
ever work with me. is a little streaky as compared to, I guess, what I would really like on a normal nail. So I am going to put one more layer of glue on it. It's completely up to you on your natural nails if you want to do that. But I always like having a completely streak-free look. It really helps with the uh, overall appearance of your nails. And if you are taking, you know, pictures with them and other things like that, you do want complete streak-free. It would be the best way to do it. So make sure you get the side walls, the edge of the nail. Now, one thing is, if you are working with glue, um, I have had quite a few times where my glue gets literally all over the side of my fingers. You can just easily use a cleanup brush and fix that, um, or leave it. Why not? Start a new trend. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I need my tweezers. Now this is the most important part. When you are doing a nail design like this that's on my pinky, you are going to want to make sure that you are placing your glitter while the polish is wet. Since we are using a dry glitter, that means that we have to make sure that we get this on so that that layer is still tacky and we can still apply the glitter into that layer. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So these tweezers probably aren't the best for that. You know what? I'm going to try using one of these. Good old fashioned, a little bit of spit on the end. Alright, so while you're placing these, just kind of picking a pattern or any order that you want to go in. I'm going to do a little different than my nail. Personally, I think it's going to look a little nicer that way. I'm just going to kind of put them all over the nail in random positions. that. I probably could have left some of that glitter out since I changed my mind. You know what's kind of funny is whenever I'm doing nail art and stuff like this, I change my mind about 50,000 times. And I know my poor boyfriend probably gets sick of me. But I'm always asking him, what do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? And yeah, and by the end of the day, he's just like, yep, okay. Whatever design you like, dear. Alright, so let's go ahead and keep going. Oop, that started setting up really nice. Whatever. All right, so you can kind of see I'm going in a bit of a pattern, but not really. I'm just kind of placing them wherever I kind of see fit. Wherever I kind of want to put them, I'm just placing them. And you notice when I'm placing them down, I'm not jamming them into the polish. I'm just kind of lightly tapping on them. You know, and it is placing them fairly well. It is kind of smashing them into the polish but not disrupting it to the point where it looks wrinkly. So now that one is complete. Not too hard. It's actually really quite simple. You can see all the stars on there. Now this one, like I said, with mine, oh, let's see if it can focus again. With mine, I only put five on there. I put three on this side and two on this side. Oh, my goodness, it's all out of focus again. So anyways, um, on my fingernail, I wound up putting three on one side and two on the other. This one I decided to put all over. So it will be extra sparkly. Now I am going to put that one off to the side so that I can kind of let it dry before we move on to top coating that nail. So we're going to put that off to the side up here so everyone can see that we've already done that one. All right, on to our second nail. We are going to do this one right here, this starburst pattern. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do this one. This one will be a little easier. So we're going to start off with the thumb. Um, first off, oh, 
Always make sure you cap all your nail polish that you're not using. I should know that better by now. Oh, we're gonna take that star, put it off on the side. Use it later. All right, so this is the red I chose for my design. It's actually, once again, Revlon. I promise this is sponsored. Revlon, it is from their Spider-Man collection. This one is called Spidey Sense. This is one of my favorite reds to ever use. Um, I use it for a lot of 4th of July nail art. I also use it for Christmas time because it does have that kind of bright orangey yellowish tone that catches in the sunlight and it's absolutely beautiful when you're out in the sun. So this is called Spidey Sense. Once again, a couple years old from that same collection as Super Powered was that we just used. So welcome to my other viewer that just showed up. Um, so this one right here, this is this red that I have on my thumbnail right now. So we're going to go ahead and apply our coats of nail polish onto this nail pop here. Now, nail pops are fantastic. I really do enjoy using them. The only thing is that they do tend to look a little more sheer than they will on the natural nail. Oop. Let's get a little more polish here. They will look a little more sheer um, than on the natural nail just because it is a fake nail and they are see-through. Now if you get the nail pops that are white or like a cream color, it'll be more more accurate to the natural nail. But this one, not so much. They only had the clear ones when I was shopping. So if you can tell, this color right here was actually quite a bit more opaque than the other one. You just have to kind of deal with Revlon. Sometimes they are very, very on point with their formulas. Other times they're really super streaky. So it all depends on, you know, the formula you get. You got to be understanding with them. So now this one is actually going to be really super easy. Um, it is just this topper that I have. The topper that I wound up getting, I chased everywhere with my mom last year. It was by Sinful Colors. It's called Star Blast Off. Now this right here is a glitter and it is in a see-through base. Now mine is a year old. This came out last year and if you notice it kind of looks pink-ish. Um, and that is because all of those wonderful red glitters in there decided to bleed all into it um, throughout the course of the year. And when I opened my drawer to pull it out this 4th of July, um, it was pink. So I figured it wouldn't have that big of a uh, effect on a red polish. So like I said, this one tends to be a little more opaque than the blue. We're going to put another base coat on, or another, sorry, not base coat, another layer of polish on here just to make sure that we are completely opaque and ready to go. Oh, I love this color. This is one of my favorite. So, um, like I said before too, if you guys have any questions or anything, please feel free to leave anything in the description, or in the description box, well, comment box. Um, I'll answer your questions as I go if I can. Um, like I was saying, this one is a pretty awesome color. This is Spidey Sense, one of my favorite. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap this so my clumsy butt doesn't spill it everywhere um, since you can't really get it anymore. But this one is a really, really good color. If my camera wants to work, you can kind of tell how shiny it is. Like I said, with on my thumb too, it is very, very shiny. Um, and it does catch in the sunlight very well. So I'm gonna leave that one off to the side. And while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to prep the next couple for these nails. I need to make another blue base one for this design, a red base for this design. And this one actually has a white base underneath it. You wouldn't know that unless I told you just because of how the beads are. So while I'm thinking about it, we're just going to go ahead and prep these up so that we are ready to go. Because those other designs that I just showed you on my um, ring finger and my index finger are going to need plenty of time to dry because we are doing a little bit of dry brushing on them, which is a fun technique if you have never used it before. I highly suggest sticking around to find out how to do it. Um, or if you don't want to stick around, you can always Google it on YouTube or, or Google it or YouTube it or something like that. Um, let me get my blue. I'll leave my red uncapped to kind of test my luck here. Do another bit of this blue. This is actually my first time using this blue polish. All years I've had it. First time using it. Oh, I guess that's what happens when you have a bunch of bottles of nail polish that just kind of sit in drawers. So, I also needed that white. Now the white actually, 
actually while those are drying I want to tell you about this I picked up this white it's from Miracle Gel it's um 450 it's called Get Mod I do like it for the most part um I do feel like it stays on my nails very well for a very long time it's very durable very chip resistant except when I am applying it it tends to be a little grabby I guess you could say. And by grabby, I mean when I'm applying it, if the first layer is not completely dry, it grabs onto that. The second layer grabs onto the first layer and just kind of rips it off. So, since, ugh, since I'm going to be on camera applying this, you know, you might get a chance to see it. You might not. I don't know. Usually it's easier just to apply one big thick coat. Um on a fake tail because it doesn't matter how thick it is. It does, but it doesn't. See, that one was fine. We're gonna have to wait and see if that one actually lets me work with it a bit. <laughs> we will see a little bit. So anyways, um, get this red one out again. And put that second coat on there. This red actually is wonderful but it is kind of a stainer so you got to make sure that you do have a good base coat on that for extra nails or you are going to have weird colored nails for a little while um if you do ever have weird colored nails like from nail polish um staining a good way of getting um that color off i actually like to use denture cleaner out of everything it gets that like yellow stain off your nails you just kind of put it in a bowl and you um you let it your fingers soak for a good 10 minutes or so, and then you take it off. Be careful not to do it a bunch, just because it will weaken your nails. Um, but I'll let them soak, and then I'll throw some strengthener on them just to like kind of make them super healthy. Throw some cuticle oil and stuff like that on, and then they'll be good to go. So I think I should be good with that blue one is now opaque. That red is now opaque, so we're ready for these two right here. This one, the white one, we gotta do that. Like I said, the white can be a little grabby, so you might get a chance to see what I'm talking about. You might not. Um, I've never used this one on a fake nail before, so we'll find out. All right, my tools are sitting here getting away. Tis the hazards of being a nail person. So you can kind of tell it's a little streaky. I don't know if you can tell it on camera at all, but as I go over it, I don't know if people are like, oh, you don't go over it more than once. I always do. But this one right here, you can kind of see it's a little streaky, and that's because it grabbed onto that base layer. Now, this was actually minimal grabbing. Normally, it's a lot more. So I'm very fortunate that it didn't grab on completely in that one. Okay, so we just did that red one. We're ready for this design. Um, hello, next person who just came in. Um, for those of you who just arrived, didn't get a chance to see, this was our first design we did. It was on my pinky. Um, I don't know if it's going to be able to focus. On my pinky, I did three star glitters plus the two on that one. On this one, we decided to just kind of put them all over. It was like a star pattern, like on the flag. There we go. Get my fingers out of there. Let it... Oh. Let it focus. I'm having major focusing problems. If you've ever had any focusing problems, you feel my pain. I feel like everything's blurry in my life. My goodness. Oh, finding the magical spot here. It's a mystery. Oh, this is not going to work for me. Maybe I just put my fingers here. Oh, look, now it focuses. There we go. So that was our first design here where you put the glitter all over that. So we're going to put that back up there again, let that finish to dry. And like I was saying, this was that star glitter that I searched everywhere for with my mom. Um, it is by Simple Colors. This was out last year. I just seen something very similar to it in Walgreens just the other day. It's not called Star Blast Off. I wanna say it's like called Star Spangled something. They changed the name. I don't know if they changed the formula, but generally it's the same stuff. Um, I don't know if yours will turn pink, you know, by the next year like mine did, but hey, you know, it's fun. All right, so here's our first one that I told you um, that we did. If I feel the edges. It's still a little tacky, not too bad. Um, it's something that we can work with. So when you are working with a glitter like this, actually, maybe think about it. I need to shake this bad boy up to 
just so I get those star glitters underneath. Now there is something called glitter fishing, which we are going to be doing a little bit today. Um, when you are glitter fishing, unfortunately, you have to make sure that you have something that you can go for. You, when you're glitter fishing, that means you're looking for the certain glitter inside the bottle itself. Right now, when you are first applying your first layer, you are just throwing glitter random places. Now, when you apply glitter, you want to make sure that you are not dragging like super, super hard because you do have that wet layer of polish under there. You can see that tacky layer. Oh, and that is why I have paper down. You do have that um, tacky layer underneath there and the wet polish or the wet glitter base on top will reactivate that polish. So you do have to be very, very careful um, not to get it everywhere. So you have to be very careful not to get it everywhere. I'm going to set that down and I'll show you what I mean by glitter fishing. I like to use this tool right here. This is actually, I got it in an OPI kit a long time ago. There's a little tiny brush on the end and there's a little dotting tool. What you do for glitter fishing is you just sit here and you pull up your glitter. I don't know if you're going to be able to see very well due to the focusing. You just kind of fish with your bottle or your brush from the bottle and try to pull out the different pieces of glitter that you want. So like I am searching for white stars right now which seems to be very difficult on my end. I don't know why. Oh, there's so many of them in the bottle and yet they never seem to end up on the brush. No idea why. And here I thought this was an easy one. <laughs> right. Okay. So I can see a bunch of them just kind of hanging out. Oh look I got one. Yes. It's literally like catching the prize fish here. All right, so here is my little white glitter star, if you can see it on the end. I'm just going to pick that bad boy up. Ooh, don't fall back in the bottle. That will be a pain in the butt. Okay, awesome. So I got my first little white glitter star on the end. I'm just going to take it, and I'm going to place it where I see fit on the nail. Now remember, I just put a big layer on there, so it is still kind of tacky. Make sure you don't jam the polish in there. Don't jam that star in there because it will wrinkle the polish and overall your design will look kind of amateurish. Um, you are, remember, you are doing this to have fun, you know, but if you want really good looking nails, you just gotta follow a few key, key tips, you know, to make sure that you, you know, don't sit there and jam stuff in and make it look like an at-home job. You want a good salon job. All right, let's put another one right here. Oop, we got a blue glitter on there. I really don't want that hanging out on the star. I want that star to be prominent. So, let's go for, oh, look at that. Two came out that time. Oh, one's going back on it, but that's okay. All right, let's put another one right down here. I think we should probably put another one, I don't know, right in this area. Let's see if I can find that one that went down. Ah, I found it. See, glitter fishing, not that big a deal. Some people hate it. I don't mind it. You know, it's one of those things completely up to you if you decide you want to put up with the baloney of glitter fishing or if you want to stick around you know and put up with it a lot of people don't they just buy the loose glitter ah oh, there was one look at that see i got better at it that time some people just want to have everything just done right away um other people would rather just have the loose glitter so that they can place it as is blue one. Or another blue one. All right. So I'm going to use my paper towel right here to wipe off my brush so that it doesn't stick to anything. And we're done. We just need to top coat this and we'll be all done with that. So this is, there we go. I'm going to have to put my nails in there. This is our second design, which is the one on my thumb. It matches it. So something kind of cool. Can't complain. Yeah, good. Okay, so we're gonna put this over here to let that also dry very slowly um, before we put a top coat on. Because I don't want everything to bleed onto everything. All right, so look at this. Oh no! Polish take off. Okay, so we have three designs left. We have our red, our blue, and our white, which are our three fingers here, the index, the middle, and the ring. 
Now, something I want to show you guys, we are going to do this white one right here, which is this middle caviar bead looking nail. This is kind of one of the most interesting nails I've ever made before. Um, they both turned out very interesting and they are bumpy, which is fun. Um, you can easily make this mix at home by just getting a few things. This is what I made. I actually made this bead mixture. Um, they are caviar beads, which are very interesting. I wound up getting some of mine from Michael's with a 50% off coupon. Came in this big, gigantic, huge thing. I wound up using the red in this one, and I used the like clearish white in this one. And I had, I didn't have any dark blue that came from that. I didn't like the light blue in the other one. So I wound up having this like dark blue caviar beads that I had gotten from eBay or Amazon or something a long time ago when I first started nail art. But I never really used them for just being caviar beads. But anyways, this is, oh, let me open this. This is the caviar mixture I was talking about. It is actually red, white, and blue, which is fun. You can kind of see that on camera now. Welcome back to the next person who came. Thank you. So this right here is red, white, and blue caviar mix. It is bumpy on the nail. So if you do not like texture, I would not do this nail. Um, but what I did is I just put a little bit of red in here, a little bit of white, and then a little bit of blue, mixed it around. I seen if I liked it or not. I actually had to remix this about three or four times, adding different colors to get the look that I wanted. Now, in order to do this, the reason I did the white is because the clear beads, or the clear uh, caviar beads in here, they're, they look kind of white, but they're actually clear. So I want to make sure that it did come out white. I guess what you could do is if you want to make a different mix, you could do any base color that you wanted on the polish. Um, and then just throw these on top. But when you're doing caviar beads, you always want to make sure that you have something to pour into, which I have this wonderful, gigantic glass. You know, it's actually a tea candle holder. Why not? I'm being creative. So, what you are going to do is you're going to take your white color, or your white colored nail, you're going to open your top coat. I just use such feet, so it does dry very quickly. So you have to make sure that you are on top of it in the pour, or else they are not going to stick. So when you are sitting there and getting ready to pour this on, I would take a thick layer and start at the very top. I just kind of drag down, make sure you get all the edges because you only really get one shot at this. And since that sheet dries very quickly, as soon as I have all edges covered, I'm going to start the pour. So all edges are covered. I'm gonna grab my caviar mixture. Oh, hope that it's in focus and start pouring. You notice it starts to stick very well. I'm just kind of rotating finger around. Always make extra caviar beads because, or caviar mix, or else you will regret it. Now, I just poured this on. You can tell that it's completely covered in beads. You notice some of them are falling off. I always give it like a light little tap, and then what I will do is I will take my finger and very, very lightly, this is a key term, very lightly just tap. Now you want to tap a couple times, wipe your finger off, because remember, you just put that top coat on. So it is coming through the beads. The white layer underneath is still a little tacky. So you want to make sure that when you are tapping it down, you are not pressing so hard that white is coming through. I did that on accident on my very first nail. Now you notice on this side, oop, I messed up. So I'm going to grab a couple more while it is still tacky and tap it in. Oh, see, now I must have missed, oh, I must have missed that side of top coat. Now this is what I mean when you have limited time. So I'm just going to take a little bit of top coat here and attempt to put that in. Oh, I got caviar beads in my top coat. That's okay. So if you get caviar beads in your top coat, make sure that you wipe your brush off before you put it in there. Um, luckily mine is okay. But you see what I mean? You got limited time. We're going to go back and fix that later if we feel like it needs to be fixed. Um, you do have to top coat this. If you decide to wear this as a design, please, 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 I know it gets rid of some of like the texture of it, but even though you tapped this into the top coat really well and into that color, it will slowly pick its way off. Um, just wearing mine today on here, I just did these last night. You can already tell on the sides here, I already lost some beads. I did have beads all the way up to those edges. Um, I lost a few beads over here as well, 
um, it does slowly pick itself away just because that's how it does it. So we now have a newly covered caviar bead nail. If it would like to refocus, come on little thing, there we go. So now we have a new caviar beaded nail. You can take these right here that your beads that are in here left over and just pour them very carefully back into your storage container of choice. Now you notice it actually, I barely used any of my bead mixture. Uh, like I said, you always want extra bead mixture just in case because if you are in the middle of pouring and you realize, oh, hey, I need more, it takes a really long time to actually make this. So, oh, thank you for the like. I appreciate it. That was my first one. All right. So I'm going to, once again, like I said, put this top on so I don't spill it everywhere because I'm very clumsy and I'm going to put it off on the side. Now, like I said, we're going to top coat this, but we're going to wait until after it is completely dry. I'm just going to take this aside. Put it right up here. Oh, thank you. Okay. So now we are on our last two. We have our blue firework. Come on, thing. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. Okay. Blue nail with the fireburst and or the um, firework, and we have our red with the firework. Now these two essentially are the same design, but they have different base colors. So this one, you have your blue base, which is for this nail, and you are going to be using white and then red. On this one, you are going to be using white and then blue. Now on both of these nails, I also have this really pretty Essie um, glitter. It is called Set in Stones. It's from their uh, Lux FX lines. It is very pretty, actually. It does glitter very well. Um, we will be using that towards the end. We're going to start with this red one first. We're actually going to alternate between both of them so we can get them done in time before my battery dies. I think my battery is starting to get a little low. Yep. About half. I should be good. Okay. So we have our blue and our red. Now, for this one, like I said, you are going to be doing some dry brushing which you are going to pick up one of the brushes here. I use one of the thinner ones. I've got two. I have this one from OPI and I have this one that I got in an OPI set as well. This one is a little bit thicker. It's really good for using, like, for thicker lines. This one is really good for thin detail work. So, you're going to pick your brush of choice. I think I'm gonna pick this one, actually. It'll make it a lot easier. I'm gonna get my white polish out. I'm gonna shake it up. And we're gonna put it over on the side. So now some people like to take this out, depot it, and put it onto like tin foil or something. I don't do that. I just kind of lift it up and I brush a little bit that I need very lightly because you only want really really thin amount on here. So now for the blue, I'm going to do it off on this corner. I'm going to do one from this corner down and this corner up. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to move my red out of the way so it's a little bit easier. So when you have your nail, you are going to start very carefully to make line this way, line this way, line this way. So you now have three lines going out. It kind of looks like a weird bird foot. Now you're going to start just kind of brushing the brush very lightly over and in between those lines. Now this is called dry brushing because you notice I'm not leaving behind a lot of paint. It's just a little bit. You notice I'm kind of catching and pulling some of the old paint. That's okay. That's all part of the technique. And remember, fireworks aren't always perfect. You know, sometimes they go off and they just go in 10 different directions. That's kind of the look you're going for. Now, I want a little bit more white on this one. Not a whole lot. But a little more. I'm just going to put a little more detail work in there. A little bit lighter. There we go. See how I kind of gave it that little sunburst pattern? Or a firework pattern? And once again, it's not a sunburst. There we go. So you can kind of see that sunburst. Sunburst. See, I said it again. That firework pattern right there. That's how it's kind of all in there. So we're going to try this again on the other side. Once again, do a little bit more. Now I'm going to flip the nail around for here. Now when I'm doing this one, I want to go in the opposite corner. You notice mine are in opposite corners here. I'm going to do the same thing that I did up here. Start one, two, and then three. And then just kind of fill in the lines in between them. Just kind of lightly brushing. Making that really pretty pattern going on. Alright, so I've got one there. I'm going to do another one. Right. 
So, ooh, so you know, if you do a little bit too dark, that's okay. Just kind of get rid of some of your paint and then just brush, dry brush over it. Now, that's about how far you want um, your fireworks to go. Now, you can go a little further if you want or a little further in. It's completely up to you. But I like to leave this really nice blue strip here just so we can put the glitter where it needs to go in just a little bit. Now, I've got paint all over this. I normally, if you would want to, just move right to the red part, but we're gonna go right over to this um, red one right here and do the same thing. Now, on my nails, I decided to do two separate ways. I did up this way and down this way and then the opposite on the other one. Up to you, whichever way you wanna go. I'll go ahead and do kind of the opposite. I wonder how all the nail techs like do all of their and nail art is so beautifully. I have the hardest time actually like painting away from me. I'm so used to doing my own nails. <laughs> I do better when I'm doing my own nails. I'll grant you some people can't paint their own nails. It all depends on you know, I guess maybe who you are. Ooh, see look. Got some white on that. That would be a cleanup for sure. made the white extend a little bit further. Now, let me get a little more because I'm kind of unhappy with how that one turned out. So, if you look right there, that kind of wants to come into focus. There we go. Maybe it's my bottle. Oh no, it's my hand that's going on. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of lightly throw a few more strokes in here. throw a few more strokes in there and that one should be good to go. Now I'm ready to change color. So what you're going to want to do is I always wipe it off on some uh, paper towel that I have off screen right now. But I like to carry around when I'm getting this like little sample Zoya um, nail polish remover a long time ago and I just kind of keep using it. I use this little acrylic dappin dish here. You mainly people use it to uh, clean off their acrylic brushes and stuff like that when they're doing acrylics but polish remover. I just kind of dip my brush in there, kind of wipe it on the side. I get my paper towel, of course, wipe it off, and then kind of reform it as I go. Works really well. Keeps it nice and clean. All right, let's put that over the side so it's going right. All right, so we're done with the white. So we're going to just go ahead and tighten that up nice and tight. We are going to need our blue, because we'll do this one first. Remember, you're goal is to incorporate all three colors into the nail that you're doing. If you have a red background, you're always going to use white first because it helps separate the red from whatever color you're putting on top. So this one obviously, if it has a red background, we'd use white first, and then we would put blue on it. So I'm going to grab blue, just like I did before, and lightly start stroking. I'm going to do the bird split again. That's a good idea. Lightly trailing colors. You don't want it super prominent. See if you notice on mine, where did that one go? See, it's not super prominent. I got some some blue on there, but not a whole lot. So I'm just gonna lightly put some blue on there. Then this one. Same general idea.
less blue than you did on the white just because the white is kind of that buffer zone. Now you want to calm down with the blue. You don't want it too super prominent. I'm going to do a little more blue just to back here. So now that I use the blue, I'm not going to worry too much about cleaning my brush again. Ooh, I'm going to take out my color. Good thing no polish dries fast. I'm going to put this one on the side, grab my blue one again, flip it around, and get started on the red. Same general thing. My goodness, there's a lot of talking in this. <laughs> All right. one tends to be like it's not a vibrant red so what I like to do is I like to just kind of do one stroke here I'm just going to do the light coat all right here oh I got a hair hanger oh, my cat hair I always have cat hairs in my heart all right so you notice it's not super prominent so I'm going to go back over it again if you need to go over it that is fine just make sure you don't drag too hard, or you are going to take off all of your work. See how that became a lot more shimmery and a lot more bright? Go ahead and add a little bit more to this one here. See, now this one doesn't look too much like a Starburst, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. Alright, so I'm done with that. I'm going to wipe off my brush here. I can tell. Dip a little bit in the acetone. And keep wiping. See, it's coming off with a little bit of blue. Well, it should be pretty good. Okay, so these are our two starburst or firework patterns. I keep calling them starburst. Our firework patterns so far. We've got our red and we have our blue. Very pretty so far, but they're not up to that glitter end that I would like. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our set in stones by Essie. And just like we had some kind of glitter fish for the stars for this design here, we are going to have to kind of glitter fish a little bit for this one, but we're not going to use the other one. If you want to use the small brush, you can. I personally, I did it for these two. I glitter fished and it took forever. These ones, I just kind of dabbed it on and it was fine. It looked the same. So, not worried about it. So we're just gonna put this over on the side. Now when you are applying this right here, you're going to make sure you dry off the brush quite a bit, wipe it inside the container. And when you are applying this, you're not just streakily wiping this across because it does have a glitter base on it. It will drag the colors and wreck your whole work. So you are going to start lightly putting on some silver glitter here. Now remember, you don't want to cover it in glitter polish. That's not the goal. The goal is just to give it a little bit of glam so that when it catches the sunlight, or a firework display light, you're gonna want it to catch off and you're gonna want it to really show. Now, you can just do the center if you want. I did a little bit of everything. I put more glitter right in the center here of the firework, first off, and then I worked my way in. So you notice I put some glitter in the firework centers there. Then I just kind of lightly dabbed a little bit of glitter on. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. A little bit of glam never hurt anybody. So there's the first one. You kind of see all that glitter on there. It's really quite pretty. Especially getting caught in the light. You can do the same thing for your blue. Okay, let's start. A little bit of glitter in the middle here. This is the optional part if you want to go that extra mile. Now on mine, on my nails, I wound up putting little gemstones right there. These are little gemstones I wound up getting, I think I got them at Amazon. I got like 2,000 of them for like 50 cents or something. You can find them easily. Um, I'll make sure I link a comment or link these in the comments below if I can find them. Um, they did not come in this little tiny container. They came in a big bag. I just repotted them down there. So. When you are working with these, once again, just kind of like with the star glitters from earlier, I'm just going to grab them and put 
them on whatever surface I'm working on. You notice I keep picking them up, putting them down. It's because the tops are not working for me. There we go. Okay, so now I have four of them that are glitter side up. Now we, oh, hello, kitten. My cat decided to come join me. So our bottom layer is still a little tacky. I'm just going to kind of pick it up with one of my fingers here. And lightly to the center of that firework. Ooh, that one was off. There we go. Oh, I think I did that one off camera. Oops, I'm sorry, guys. Alright, so that one is off. That one is on, I think. Boom. Alright, perfect. Okay. So now you want to make sure that when you top coat these, you don't actually go over them. So you want to make sure you don't go over the gems because the gems will get really cloudy if you do. Hi, next viewer. Um, so you have to want to make sure that you are being careful with those. Now these two, when you are doing these two designs, you have to be very careful. Um, when you put the top coat up at the top and you drag down, you want to make sure that you're not pushing your brush too hard, whereas it drags this blue into the white to the red. It gets really streaky and it looks really, really funny. So you have to be really careful when you're top coating them. So, oh, as I drop one of the pops. Oh, I hope I didn't wreck it. No, oh, I didn't. Good thing it dries quick. Okay. See, everybody makes mistakes. No one's perfect. All right, let's move this over to the side. And pull out all five of our designs here. They are all ready for top coat. Yay! So, I hope you guys enjoyed um, all of these different designs. I really like this set of nails. Probably the, I guess, craziest set that I've made in a long time. Um, I really like a lot of glitter and that kind of stuff. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed too. At first I thought they were a little much, but, you know, hey. It's all about being patriotic. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw some top coat on these. Seal in the design and give it a little shine there. On your natural nails, you might want to put a couple coats of top coat on these just to make sure that they really stay. I like such beat a lot because it does dry fairly quickly and even if you put that extra layer on, it's not going to be, you know, take forever to dry like some nail polish or some uh, top coats do. Well, some nail polish just to dry. I don't know. I'm impatient. Centrivite also does not put like streaks in your nails. Um, it's almost like it hardens and it performs perfect or it uh, creates a very protective layer on the very top and it doesn't allow it to really have anything touch it. Alright, now this one's kind of hard because it is Heavy our beads. And, oh, so look, I already lost a couple more. We're gonna go ahead and just throw a thick layer on top. Now this one I do kind of drop some on. And you gotta be careful because these beads will bleed into each other and they will get become a very metal mess of color if you put too many I guess, brush strokes over them. So try this sounds weird, but try to stroke. Make sure you get your edges, or else they will fall off everywhere. Like I said, they do kind of, kind of tend to pick away. Um, when you do put the top coat on, it does seal them in, so you have, you are less likely to lose beads. But you still can lose beads. Like I said, I lost some already today. So not very practical if you're really super hard on your nails. All right, here's the ones we just did. Like I said, I'm gonna try not to get top coat on those gems that I put on the side. If you really want and you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going to hit those gems, just wait to put the gems on until after you do your top coat. You can put this top layer of top coat in and then press the gems in. But, you know, I just felt like being different today. Alright, there's one. I like the durability of acrylics. I like that idea. So 
if I put like a layer or two of sesh feet on, I feel like I get really thick nails and I do like really thick nails. So if you don't like super thick nails, don't be putting on like two, three coats of nail polish. If you do, or two, three coats of top coat. If you do like really thick nails, kind of like acrylic almost, but not acrylic, you can always use a couple coats of sesh feet. It works really well. I know my mom likes it. So I hope you guys had a wonderful day um, and a wonderful time joining me here on Nail & Polish. This is our very first live tutorial. Um, I'm hoping I get to do this a little more often um, and I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Like I said, we have five different patriotic nail designs here. Um, let me know what your favorite was. If you liked the blue and star, just the red with the topper, the um, caviar bead, or either one of the fireworks up to you. Um, or if you didn't like them at all, you know, it works good. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm glad you guys decided to come join me. And if you haven't already, please like my page, Nail It Polish, for more designs. We put out designs every Saturday or so. Um, Saturday, sometimes Sunday, sometimes there's extra if I'm feeling ambitious. Um, and I would love to have you guys be a part of this. You know, it's something that I really enjoy to do. And I would love to share that passion with you. So thank you very much for coming, and I hope you have a wonderful 4th of July. Please be safe, and have a good day, guys.